Let's get to this, this bread of life. We finna eat some manna. All right, so let's go. Let's uh, kick it off in the book of Philippians chapter two. Let's read 13 through 18. 13 through 18. Somebody, uh, each person read four a piece. Uh, Philippians chapter two, verse 13 through 18. Okay, I got it. I can start it off. Uh, Philippians 2, starting with verse 13. For God, and this is in the NIV version. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and power to do what pleases him. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. 13. Is it chapter 2, verse 13? Yes. Chapter 2, verse 13. Uh Uh-huh. I didn't even know I was (laughs) off. You mute, uh, Sister Kim. You mute, Kimmy. Okay, go ahead. Just pick it back up. Okay, hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice and I will share your joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Apostle Paul right into the uh, Philippians church, Philippi and Philippi. And again, he was, uh, uh, at this point, this was the last letter he wrote because he was in jail at this time. And uh, he said, do every, here we go again. He's saying the same thing Peter said, y'all. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God. Here we go, shining like a bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. So again, we have to understand, although we get down, we already know what we're dealing with, y'all, by now. Everybody on here that done gave their life to Christ should know what type of life and what type of world that we are living in. Hello, somebody. So what does that mean? We have to find strategies to be able to function in this world of darkness as what? The children of light. Didn't he just say that? Amen. Amen. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright light in a world full of crooked and perverted people. Hold friendly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain. Saying that, Mm -hmm. you know, as leaders, when we given a word to you from the Lord, from the Holy Ghost, what he's saying, he don't want to feel like everything that he done put in y'all was for nothing. Mm -hmm. Because ain't nobody giving nothing. Ain't nobody light shining. Ain't nobody doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm. So this is what Paul is saying, and he's right, because as a teacher, that's what you feel like. You don't want what you are pouring into somebody else to be null and void. You want to see what you're pouring into them will come out to the glory of God. It will produce what it's supposed to produce. It will do what it's supposed to do in their lives. Mm -hmm. You want to see 
productivity. That's the same thing Jesus was telling the disciple. You got to produce fruit. So again, that's what the lesson is about again today. Just keeping your mind and your life being productive for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes in this dark world, we can get thrown off easy. Mm -hmm. And you can get thrown off where you just get off track and you don't even know what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Because of what? The cares of the world. But as mm -hmm. believers, we have to work against that. By what? Practicing the things of God. Amen. All right, so let's let's flip it. Let's go to Second Peter <sighs> chapter one, verse three. Okay, I'll read it. You said Second Peter, verse three, chapter uh, one. Chapter one, verse three, yeah. According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Wow. Paul, I mean, read that again. Okay. According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us glory and virtue. Amen. So what Peter is saying in the NIV version is saying right here that uh, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for a living for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. So Peter is saying, now, in other words, all of this teaching that y'all got been getting for the past two and a half years, he said, by now, you have been given all of the stuff that you need to run this race. To Amen. you have been given all the knowledge that you really need to live a holy and he said godly lifestyle. Amen. Amen. There is no more that you need. You can build on what you have, but you have enough now to live godly. Mm -hmm. You know enough now, today, to teach somebody else. Amen. Amen. How to live godly. Amen. So, as you take, I mean, this, this is deep. Because Peter is telling them, like, bro, sis, by now you have what you need for a living, a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have received all of it. Everything that he has downloaded in me, I have downloaded in y'all. So now it's time for y'all to pick it up, do something with it. Do something with it. You, it, It's not about, you have enough knowledge in your toolbox now to know what do you do when trouble comes? What do you do to get out of the mud? What do you do if somebody is sick? What do you do? You have enough. Somebody answer that. What do you do when you're in the mud? You got to get out of the mud. But how do you get out of the mud? Fasting. Oh, fasting and praying. Reading your word. Mm -hmm. Practicing the principles of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, so, Jesus. so, yeah. So if somebody came to you and was telling you they had a problem, they had a real bad problem, and they were stuck in the mud, and they, they were not a believer, what, what would you tell them? You got to receive the Lord and repent. <laughs> Will that be the uh, first thing you say to them? The first thing I would say was trust. You got to trust God. You got to don't worry about it and trust Him. Okay. So they came and said, "Yo, you know, I'm really going through a battle with my um with my spouse. What if they were going through a battle with their spouse, and the spouse was giving them problems? What would you say to them?" Usually, what I say is, "Hey, do you believe in Jesus? Do you want to pray?" Pray. 
they say if they say yeah we go ahead and pray and then if they sometime and they start crying and start saying well do you want to receive jesus christ your lord and savior and they say yeah and then i mean that's what i do amen amen good answer good answer so if somebody came to you that was a believer and said yo I'm, I'm I'm feeling some kind of way in my body. My body's not acting right. What would you do? Let somebody else answer. Somebody who ain't answered yet, answer. Okay. I would um um I would um first say we're gonna pray, and then I'm the first thing we say we're gonna repent, and then we're gonna you know go over the scripture. We're gonna we're gonna pray the scriptures in the prayer. By His stripes we are healed. You know, mm -hmm. and, and through our faith, we believe, you know, and we're going to um, reinforce those scriptures in the prayer uh, with the person. And, 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 you know, and then afterward, you explain to them to hold on to that and don't waver from that because God has already healed you. It may take some time for you actually to see the manifestation of it, but believe you got to keep believing that it's mm -hmm. done. Amen. All right, good answer. Now, don't forget, you will have to ask a person also, do you believe God can heal you? Yes. Okay? Always ask them that, okay? Because Bible says if they have no faith that, to believe that he can do it, then it won't happen. You know, Amen. that's why Jesus asked a lot of those people, do you believe you can walk? That's what he, he asked a lot of those people he was healing. Okay, so remember that part. Good answer. Good answer. So what if somebody was like, yo, I just got a diagnosis. They say I got cancer. Rebuke How would you handle that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I rebuked that already because that's what they told me. So I rebuked it. It's In the name of Jesus. And I, haven't, and I haven't been worrying about it or nothing. I've been going to all... Uh, my prayer buddy called me the other day. I was on my way to pre-surgical testing because they found the spot in my breast y'all and um it's very small they showed it to me on the screen when i talked to uh sister crystal the other day when i went in there they showed me everything on the computer is is as small as a pin and they told me that i'm not in no stages it's not spreading so they gotta get in there and get it all out so it don't spread. Yes. so when they Man. told me i was upset I cried about it. Yes. I didn't know what I'm going to do. But yes. you know what I did? I gave it to the Lord. I prayed yes. on it. Y'all prayed for me because I ain't never breast cancer. What are you talking about? I told her right. Could you please tell me what's going on? She was like, look, Mr. Kamiko, let me tell you something. It's early. It's in no stage. It can be cured. You can be treated. You're going to be fine. You're going to be around another 20, 30 years. I said, well, that's all I needed to hear. So I just yes. gave it to the Lord. I thank yes. God help me. I'm going to go have my surgery, and I'm going to do what I need to do. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's what I'm talking about. So I feel everything y'all saying. I can't say it back biblically like y'all say it, but I'm telling you, when they told me that I was going to be all right, I just stopped worrying about it. I'm just going to be encouraged, and I'm just going to do what I need to do, and I'm going to take care of myself. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hey, hey, Hallelujah. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, it, this just reminds me when I about when I got to work the other day. And I'm going to tell you, I was prepared. I had been commanding my morning all morning. And I'm like, as soon as I walked in there, the, uh, one of the workers was saying, um, so you just going to hold the table up. I said, look, I said, the devil is a liar. I said, don't even, look, I said, don't even come over here with that. I rebuke that. You know, yeah. but I had to stop it where it started because the same lady that always is on my heels was standing right there. Wow. You know I'm trying to tell you, I had to, I'm telling you, you had to, you have to be on top of that with that rebuke. And so it won't yeah. follow you through the yeah. death. It yes. won't wear you down. It won't take God away your that. joy. Nothing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I tried a lot, y'all. I was crying, crying. Yes. real tears. Answer? Yes. Are you serious? But I'm I rebuked all of that stuff. So yes. I'm, I'm doing good. All my prognosis is so far good. So Amen. I'm, I'm good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Hey, I wanted to say um, um you know, another thing I, I started doing now. Um I know you that the ones y'all talking about stuff that's going on like on the outside already physically, but um, 
don't you know that I've been every time a thought come into my mind and it's like not correct, I just rebuke Amen. It in yes. my head. Don't nobody know what I'm saying, but I say if I rebuke that in Jesus' name, because you know yes. the thought, the thought don't come from God if it's not a good thought. Right. So, you know, that's how the enemy operate, he over operate. He try to get in your head and make you think yep. like and if you keep going with it, it'll turn into like a snowball effect. Like, mm -hmm. you know, get bigger and bigger. Yeah, if so, you like, don't rebuke it, it will keep going. The yeah. thought in my mind lately, like anything that's just weird, like, um, I don't know, for example, like uh, one time I was driving and I was like, man, what if I get it? And the thought came about the accident. I said, I rebuke that in Jesus' name right away. I want that to be in my head or plan. Just rebuke it. That's the Even enemy. Amen. Well, amen. The thought comes about something happening, you just I'll rebuke it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. Name. So amen. we know so far, we know that um great answers, everybody. Great answers. Um, y'all making me proud right now because you're you're saying the right stuff. Now I got another question. All right, so now a believer comes to you and tell you that you know. They accused her of doing something at work, but it really wasn't her. It wasn't true. How should she handle it? Her boy, her supervisor, called her in the office. Somebody lied on her, told a lie on her, but it's a bad lie, and so they put her on a warning. So what? What? What should she do? Because she's saying she's innocent of what the charges are. Who? Let somebody else answer who did not answer. Yeah. DP, TT, uh, Shaquavia, Shakia, one of y'all can answer. What would your advice be to that believer that got written up over something that was false at work? I would say her, um, to like, just don't worry about it. And um, like Ms. Monique says, to always hold on to God so change his hands because God sits high and he looks low. So whatever it is, you know, just put it in his hands and it's gonna all work out. Also, I would say that it's a um when one door when one door closes, another one opens. So even though something happened, I think it would be because God is telling her that something else is better coming for her. Mm -hmm. Okay, good answer. So also, we can add, anybody else got uh, a comment? Uh, me. Okay, go ahead. First of all, she got to pray about that thing because certain stuff like that, you know, you got to pray about it. But so yeah. first she got to pray about it. And um, then after that, she didn't go to, it's always somebody over somebody. Amen. You know, pray about it and then go to the higher ups because, you, you ain't gonna blame no nothing. <laughs> Tell the lies on people and then nothing gonna be done. No, she needs to pray and then go to the higher up. Amen. Amen. Good answer. So both of y'all gave some very good answers. Good answers. Praying about it. Like TT said, going to the upper people, maybe looking into a DP. You got an answer? Yeah, I want to piggyback off. Uh, TT got me going. <laughs> uh, no, I, I also think, you know, to help the person out, especially if they are a believer, just asking them, you know, um, how's your walk been with Christ? Because I think a lot of times outside situations happen as a result of what's going on inside of us. So Amen. asking that person, you know, what's your walk been looking like? You know, are you actively reading your Bible or do you have a morning routine you know, what are the things that you're doing for God? Because you're putting a lot of emphasis on what other people are thinking. But God is the person that, that actually gave you this opportunity. So you need to be working for God and not for a man anyway. So mm -hmm. uh, just Amen. really getting to understand, like, where are they in their walk so you can help them and then praying with them and sitting them down and telling them, hey, we also have a Zoom Bible study. Here's the link. Amen. And seeing that they're going to take any action. <laughs> right. Yes. Great answer. Yes. Yeah. Everybody. Yes. Now, see, this is why I do this. This is why the Holy Ghost told me to do this so that y'all can get, you know, answers and start realizing when things start happening in your life, this is what how you need to be answering people. Okay. 
This is how you can help people, even though it could be something that you're going through or it could be somebody, your prayer buddy going through. It doesn't matter. You're learning how to handle the situation. DP brought up something very, very important. That is very important, y'all, too, to ask the believer, what's your walk looking like? Just like he said. Because a lot of that stuff that believers go through, y'all have to remember, it could be due to lack of spending time with the Lord. Amen. And he's trying to get their attention. So he got to kind of put them in a jam to wake them up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's a very good answer. So everybody got that? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So let's keep it moving. I got one more question. All right. So... If an unbeliever came to you and said, well, you know, uh, I go to church and I believe in God, but uh, I, I haven't been baptized. I haven't, you know, spoken tongues because I don't believe all of that stuff is necessary. What would you say? Acts 238. Mm. <laughs> you need to give your life to Christ. <laughs> Let me tell you how we're going to do it. <laughs> All right. Oh All right. But that, that's a blanket statement. I need more details. What would you tell this unbeliever if you were trying to win this soul for Christ? To read Acts 238. Mm -hmm. okay. Start off with that and we could read it together. And, we, and then I would explain to them that this is God's plan um, on how, you know, we uh, can, can be saved in this life and then be with him in the afterlife. Um, he's already given us instructions um, that we must be baptized in the water and then we must wait for him to fill us with his spirit. And then once we get that, well, we have to repent. You got to repent first before you do all of that. Amen. Gotta, Don't forget that. You got to repent. You got to repent and be sorry. And, you know, and, and pray to God and let him know you're going to turn away from the things that you used to do, that you're not going to do those things anymore. And then yeah. have them read the scripture, because when you read the word, that's what transforms a man. It's not necessarily hearing the word from other people, even though hearing the word can increase your faith. So by by you speaking um, to them and giving those, them those scriptures about salvation, that will increase their faith. And then explain to them that they need to go read it and, and ask God to, to show it to them, to them, reveal to them, you know, if they don't believe that God is real, ask God to show them. And he Amen. will. He will because Amen. that's why how Sister Monique always say God's word will not return to him void. When Amen. you speak the word of God to somebody, that's God's word to that person. So hmm. whether it's you speaking and once they go and read it, that's God speaking to them. Right. You know, so then, yes. you know, that's going to, that's what's going to change a man's heart. Not no eloquent speech, not no long drawn out anything. Give them the word of God, you know, and Acts 238 is where it started for me. Mm -hmm. that's you know, someone spoke to me and told me about the rapture that increased my faith. You know, even though I didn't even know it was faith at that time, but that when they spoke to me, I believed. I believe Amen. what they told me. Then they said, go to the Bible and read Acts 2.38. And then I read it. And then they said, we got, we got baptism and we got, uh, you can tarry for the Holy Ghost, which means wait for the Holy Ghost. Do you want it? And I said, yes. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else have an interpretation? Praise God. Yes. Um, yes. You know, it was given to me straight and raw. Like, you know, you know, when people st when you start explaining what you going through, you know, I was asked, um, did you, you know, you need to get, I was told you need to get your life to Christ the, the right way on the straight and narrow. Let me explain to you what that means. And you know, back in the day, they, they, you know, they would tell you just holiness or hell. You know, that's what, the, the, you know, that's what they did. You right. know, it wasn't a whole lot of explanation to it, you know, and then you <laughs> sat down and you read, you listened as the pastor was going over the scripture, you followed along and only one Bible, which was the King James version. It wasn't Amen. all the other stuff out, but, um, you know, thankfully now it's a way 
that um it, you know people can understand the Bible. You give them a um, NIV version first of all, because that'll be the better way, so they won't get frustrated Amen. and not read the Bible. Amen. You know, because of lack of understanding, not realizing that you get an understanding of the King James Version when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. A Amen. lot of people don't realize that, but that's when you can read that version and you can get an understanding because the Holy Ghost is leading and guiding you. But, um, you know, I would let them know they need, you know, you need to give your life to Christ and, um, you know, um, read some scriptures with them and, and try to explain it to them because... At first, you're not going to understand, but you got to hope that they receive it. Amen. You know, you got to pray and ask God to help you, you know, say the right <clears throat> thing to them so that they will receive it so Amen. that you can be led by the Holy Ghost yourself while you are trying to guide that person to Christ. So, Amen. you know, that's important as well. Amen. Amen. All right. Good answer. Now. Um, take it a little further. What if the person said, after you did all that, what y'all just said, and then the person said, oh, well, I still don't believe. I need somebody else. What would you do? If they still don't believe? Yeah, if they still don't believe after you done did all of what Krista said, all of what Monique said. Well, me, I would just tell them, well, I'm sorry. That's all I can do. You know, all I can do is pray for you and wish you the best. And Dust that's your it. feet off. <laughs> what? Wow. Dust your you better feet pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and keep it moving. <clears throat> but you got to keep God first. And I'm not talking slick and all that slang, slang. I'm just saying, in general, you got to keep God first. I don't care what you go through in your life, what you experience in your bank account, what you experience in your health. You got to trust God no matter what. Amen. Amen. You better that's say it. I'm saying it, because I'm saying it. I ain't saying it like y'all said, but I'm telling you, you got to hey, be as long as everything you do in your life. I don't care if you get behind the wheel of a car, you going here and there and everywhere, you traveling, you doing things, you doing big things, you catching flights, whatever. Hey. You got to thank God for everything that comes across everything. Uh, That's what you got to do. Period. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, hey. yeah, they might. They might tell Kamika, okay, where can I get baptized? <laughs> so, so I'm just saying, it took me yeah. a while to get to where I'm at today, but I'm where I'm at today because that's where I want to be at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I let a lot of things go. I let a lot of people go. I wrote people off. Folks wrote me off. Who cares? Yeah. I don't. Because guess what? I wake up every morning. I thank God for the wake up. I go to bed every night. I thank God for that. I thank God for whatever I have. I thank God for my daughter. I thank God for everything. Because I can Amen. have nothing, nothing. Amen. And I've Amen. had nothing. I've been to Amen. the bottom. I'm getting myself back up here. But you know what? I'm tired of not having nothing. I'm tired of struggling all the time. I, I'm yeah. not doing that no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you Abundant wrote me off, life. fine. Wrote me off. Abundant life. That's right. I'm not mad. I'm just speaking the way how I'm speaking right now because I feel that warmness in my stomach. Yeah. Right I'm just feeling the glow right now because I'm yeah. telling you, this is real. You yeah. know, I even heard my mouth. I don't even be cussing. Yeah, I might slip a few times and be all yeah. God forgive me, but it's not like in my everyday vocabulary. I talk to some of my friends now. They be like, oh, F this, F that, everything. My cousin called me this morning for Father's Day and he was m and and said, look, Chuck, I'm about to get on the prayer call, so I'm going to talk to you later. That's what I said this morning. Praise God. Praise I'm just saying, I'm not Amen. perfect. I don't try to be. And I, like I said, sometimes my mouth slips, but you know what? I thank God that he's changing my life. I thank God Amen. that he's giving me the strength to just sit here and talk about things and, and, and don't be feeling all sad and things. Look, like today, I was feeling some kind of way, heavy heart because of my father, whatever. But you know what? <laughs> Jesus is my father too. He's always yeah. been my father, but I never acknowledge him like I do now. Amen. So I just want to thank y'all. I'm I'm good. I'm I'm so yeah. good right now. I just want to thank y'all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, villagers. Thank you. Yeah, I don't, really don't want to be long with it, but I'm telling you, I feel like I could be long with it today, but I'm gonna <laughs> keep it moving. Hey. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Amen. Hey, Look at God, y'all. Look at God. What a testimony. Hey, nothing right. but the Lord. I'm telling you. Yes. Mm, yes, mm. King Jesus. He reigns. That's because hey, he what? Hey, he hey, reigns. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Over every circumstance everything, in life. Everything. Everything. Amen. <laughs> All right. So 
All right, so let's come on back now. Let's go to the book of James. Let's get to James. I got you. Chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Yeah, so read 23. 23? Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Okay. So here we go again, James. He No chaser. He's saying, uh, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law, that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus! So again, I mean, don't get no simpler than that. We Thank can't you. just be hearers of the word. We got to be do doers it. of the word. Yeah. yeah, because it's all about us putting all of this stuff together, <laughs> and making it work for our lives to get what? Better and better and better. Yep. We, we, we stop saying, I'm not perfect. We don't want to keep saying that. We want to say, I'm getting better. Okay? Amen. Well, I'm getting I'm better. I'm getting better. <laughs> I'm getting yep. better. Amen. Day to day, I'm getting better. Everything about me is changing in some fashion, some way. Something yeah. is changing in me for the what? better for the better for the better and that's how we eventually we reach what abundance life okay mm -hmm. by yes. what mm -hmm. getting better getting better each and every day getting mm -hmm. better with your mouth getting better yes. with your thoughts getting better the way you're talking to people getting yep. better how you receiving something from somebody mm -hmm. how you responding back getting mm. better with just being lit i'm having more patience being better with what? Listening more. Being better with what? Thinking before you talk. Yes. Being better with what? Humbling yourself. Being mm -hmm. better with not thinking you always right. Being better, maybe let somebody else have a chance to say something. Being better, mm -hmm. let their idea come to uh, fruition. Everything you think and want to put out there it may not be what somebody else think or want. So sometimes we have to sit back and let somebody else do something. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, again, we are getting better and better each and every day. So that is what salvation, y'all, is really all about. Getting better and getting better by what? Being doers of the word of God as I do and practice his word, he elevates me. Amen. And the more he elevates me, eventually I get to what? That abundant lifestyle that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. So you got to stay on your journey. You got to keep getting better by practicing the things of God. Is everybody with me, following me? Yes. All right. All right, so let's kick it. Let's go to the book of Matthew, mm -hmm. chapter 7, verse mm -hmm. 24 and 25. Okay, I'll read it. Verse 24, I'm reading this one because, you know, I put my stuff out. Okay. So I'm I'm reading uh, what chapter number 21? Chapter say? 7, no, chapter mm -hmm. 7. Mm -hmm. Verse 24 and 25. 24 and 25, okay. <clears throat> From the new international version it says here all right therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock <clears throat> the rain came down the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock 
Okay. All right, keep reading all the way to uh, 27. Okay. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and the beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. Amen, amen, amen. So y'all see this metaphor that G, this is Jesus talking y'all. Is that similar <laughs> to like, I'm gonna go to the movie, The Color Purple. Remember when she said, everything you think about gonna fail? Is that similar to this? Well, yeah, because every she was saying, because of all the dirt you did to me, you it's going to come back to you. Okay? Yeah, everything you think about going to fail. Remember she said that in the movie? Yeah. That's one of yeah. my favorite movies, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> it just brought me to that. That's why I asked, because that's how I felt when I read the scripture just now. Yes. What Jesus is saying, basically, is anyone who listens to my teachings and follow it is wise, like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. So he's saying... Mm -hmm. Uh, the solid rock, no matter what happens, he's saying, even trials will come. That's the rain. The torrents, the flood uh, will rise and the winds will beat against the house, but it won't come last. Y'all understand what he's saying? Even though trials may come, even though sickness may come, even though disappointment may come, even though Things will happen to us, but it will not destroy us because we put our hope and our faith in Jesus. It will not be able to destroy us. So we have to remember, even though the flood is here and I got to maybe swim a little bit, but even though the wind is blowing, it's not going to take me out. It won't completely destroy me. It may bruise me up, shake me up, shake me down, knock me out. <clears throat> but it will not destroy me. Amen. Because God won't let it. But when you don't read his word, when you don't practice what he's telling us, when you don't put all of this stuff together, to make it work for your good, when you don't give your life to Christ, when you don't want to believe, all of these things can happen. The rain and the flood come and beat against the house and it will collapse because you have no foundation. Jesus Christ is our foundation. That's what we build our life around, the word of God. God. So when the devil comes, he won't be able to take us out of here. Amen, Sister Kimmy. Amen, Sister Kimmy. Mm. We Amen. put it on this word. We put our life, our hope, our dreams in the word of God. So the enemy, he won't be able to destroy you when you let the Lord be the head of your life. Amen. Amen. And you don't become <clears throat> a flip flopper. You don't flip and flop on the Lord. You hang in there, do whatever means necessary. You hang in there. You hang in there. Amen. On the high days, the low day, the bad day, the ugly day, you hang mm -hmm. in there with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even though you gotta cry sometimes, you hang in there with the Lord. You don't leave the Lord. You don't start ignoring Him. Amen. And you know, a lot of believers do that, y'all. When stuff don't yeah. go their way, they start they start ignoring God. Like He don't exist no more. Like, oh no, I don't know nothing about praise and worship no more. I don't know nothing about the gospel music no more. They flip on Him. People do that to us in the world. You know, yeah. long as you go on rah rah with the program, they all for you. But the minute you change your ways and be like, yo, I, I ain't with that, they flip on you. Mm-hmm. They flip yep. on you. Amen. I'm, I'm guilty of that because um, maybe like two years ago, um, I was a believer in God. I've always been a believer in God, but something had went wrong or something, and then I stopped believing in him like 
I'm not gonna say I stopped fully believing in him, but I had a pause and I was just like, I'm not gonna pray today, or I'm not gonna be as consistent as I was. And I had to realize, I had to consider my ways and realize, okay, that's not the right thing to do. You gotta, right. you know, keep your focus and your um faith in God. Yeah, because hey, hey. you know why we were taught that living in Egypt, y'all. So that's why when we come to Christ, if that stuff, if you're not being taught nothing different and how to overcome this stuff, a lot of people are not being taught. This is why they keep these attitudes and they keep being flip floppers because you have to be taught that, you know, by reading the word of God, you know, you realize that ain't nothing worth me losing my soul. Ain't, I don't care if God don't answer me when I want him to. I don't care if I got to go through this test. I don't care. I'm just going to have to go through it because I'm not going to turn my back on God, y'all. He's the one that could put me in heaven or hell. Amen. 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 Why would you turn your back on him of all people? Because mm -hmm. nobody, even the devil can't put you in hell. Only God can do that. I know that's right. And only God can um, chase the devil away from your life. So why would you turn your back on God? It makes no sense. You know, yes, we get disappointed and let down sometimes. Yes, we have low moments in life. But one thing I want everybody on here to understand, do not ever turn your back on God. I don't care how weak you get. I don't care how mad you get. Do not turn your back on God. Amen. Amen, Sister Kennedy. Amen. That's the trick of the devil. Because mm -hmm. once you do that, you know, he reels you away. And then he puts you back into, you know, stagnation. Then he puts you back into all kind of stronghold. Then he's able to really mess up your life. Because why? You let go of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You let go of the master, the one that has the key to life for everything. So once you let that go, honey, you on your own, boo-boo. Mm. <laughs> you fight into a crooked, perverted generation by yourself. Okay? What you said, a crooked path? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You on the crooked pathway by yourself. There okay. is no light. It's darkness everywhere. And all you mm -hmm. doing is going further and further in a dark hole. So we don't want to let the enemy trick us because that's the trick of the devil that he uses on a lot of believers. Right. Yeah. yeah. On a lot, of, and it works on a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So I want you guys to understand on today that, you know, it's nothing but the trick of the enemy when, and that's when he comes to change your mind, y'all. Remember, when I'm going through a hard time, I need to go closer to God because that's when he tries to pull you away from God. Is everybody following me? Yes. When you're going through a troubled land, that's when the enemy comes for you to mm -hmm. get you out of the presence of God, to get God off of your mind, to get you to pull you away. To pull you away from the Lord. So you always have to remember, no matter how hard the situation is that I'm going through, find you a prayer buddy, find you something to get you through it. Pray yourself through it. If you can't Amen. pray for yourself, call somebody. Amen. Amen. Because that's when he comes for you, y'all, when you're weak Amen. and when you're vulnerable. Okay? Yep. Not when everything going good in your life. Mm -hmm. Not when, you know, you all happy, happy if you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> he comes when all hell is breaking out in your life. Amen. 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 And you start putting things in your pathway. And if you're not conscious of it, you can, you can stumble. And you Amen. know, you'll be running around here acting like you don't even know God exists no more. You'll be running around here acting like you don't remember Jesus even gave his life up for you. And what he does is he makes you make <clears throat> excuses. Well, you know, I got to work. Well, you know, I ain't really got no time. Well, you know, he'll put, a, a, he'll make you have excuses to justify 
why you are leaving the presence of God. Ain't that something, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. Talking you out of your salvation. Look out. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, y'all, he is a deceiver. You got to be careful with this devil. Mm -hmm. Look, yeah. hey, um, um, Sister Kimmy, um, this reminded me of um, when, my, when, when I got the phone call that my son had been shot, you know, um, and, and, and the uncertainty that was there. You understand me? I just thank God that the first thing that I said was, okay, I'm going to pray right now, and, but I trust God. You understand me? Because yes. life situations will come. And, and I'm going to tell you, at, at a blink of an eye, your stomach might drop. Your heart yes. might feel like it fell. But you better mm -hmm. hold on to God, son, change your hands, because I knew that that was a trick of the enemy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand Amen. me? And I'm going to tell you something. I had to hold on. When I say hold on to God, son, change your hands. I'm talking about you got to, you, you know, you got to stay there. The first, and I, I called my prayer buddy. I didn't care it was that time of the month morning. I called him and I was like, I need prayer right now. Yes, yes. You know, Amen. sometimes you be too close to the situation Yes. And you got to have somebody else to help you pray, pray through. your way yes. through it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is why Amen. I assign y'all prayer buddies, okay? Be because of that. You will have times that you can't pray for yourself. That's life, okay? So that's why you have a prayer buddy, somebody that you can call, like you said, no matter what time it is, and they will pray you through it. Amen. Hey, look, yeah. and also you know, the Bible say that one chase away 1,000 and two chase away 10,000, you know, but it, you notice how I say 1,000 and 10,000. It's always 1,000 things right there waiting. Like Sister Kimmy said, they just waiting at the door. As soon as that door crack open, they're going to start rolling up on you and to take you deeper and deeper and further and further away. It's some people right now that's supposed to be on the village but that 1,000 and that 10,000 took them away because they didn't have no prayer buddies. They didn't have nobody to encourage them. You know what I'm saying? We need to know that, that it's power in prayer and it's power in numbers. You know, that's why we together. He said, assemble yourself together. Yes. You know, we need to, anytime you feel down, if you wake up and something is bothering you, you know, a relationship, some money, a job, you know, your health, and, and that stuff is hard, you know, like something you in, call somebody. You know, I remember back in the day, I called Kimmy for everything. She knew sure it that. She never got no sleep around me in the beginning. I sure and, then, and then after that, you know, and it brought peace, though. Yes. It brought that peace that surpasses understanding because I tell you, man, sometimes you go through stuff and, and you don't need to go by by yourself because the enemy, yeah. that's, that's what he good at. He good at that thing running back and Isolation, forth. Isolation, yes. Hit the replay, hit replay, 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 replay. Meanwhile, you think about it, you get down, you don't want to go to work, you don't want to, you don't want to laugh, you want to be stressed, you want to sit by yourself in a room somewhere. Hey, that's what the devil's good at. So you got to snap out of that and you got to rebuke it. You got to get somebody, you got to pray on it, and God gonna pull you out of that pit. Because if you don't be careful, you be in the pit all by yourself and no rope, no ladder, no nothing. But God always got somebody ready to, he always ready to get you out of everything and through everything. He never going to take you, but you need to, you got to call on somebody. Because I remember I call a lot of times I call Kimmy, I call my prayer buddy. And Amen. you know, it's so good when you pray about something, you know, God is coming yes. your way. And some breakthroughs are coming your way. Financial, mm -hmm. you know, he got the healing coming your way. You know, yep. I, it's just so much that God do, and He's ready. But you can't. You got to be careful because that enemy, he real good at taking you away and pulling you away and and taking you away. And you know that's why it, I'm telling you, it's it's serious with um what we talking about today. Because you know, I'm telling you, I've been there and done that, and I know what it feel like on both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. around and at the same yeah. time coming back from something and you got somebody right there on your side praying with you Amen. right on the phone with you and, and, yeah. and it just feels good god is good 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's one thing. Um, yes, Deacon, uh, you know, I want to put this out there again, everybody on this village. I keep saying this. I don't know who's really listening and really, you know, taking it in, but you have to keep connected to the village. You cannot be out there doing stuff on your own and never coming, you know, assembling yourself with the brethren, with believers like you. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we deal with unbelievers every day on a consistent base, y'all, going to work, doing what we do in life. Driving. So, yeah, whatever <laughs> it is. So you mm -hmm. have, if you're not being connected to believers, people that's like-minded like you, you definitely going to be on an island by yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can't grow like that. You got to be around the people of God. You got to be around the things of God. You need help. Yes, you can practice the principles of God on your own. But at the same time, the word also say, forsake not the assembling of the brethren. Amen? Mm -hmm. So it's very important. That is a one-on-one uh, -on -one trick of the devil. When you first give your life to Christ, he always tries to bring the cares of the world into your life so that it will back you up from serving God. Man. And then, you know, you could use the excuse, well, you know, I'm working. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. You know, but you're going to have to find some time in your life to give to God. Amen. Amen. If you're going to expect to make it on this journey called life. Amen. Amen. Now, you can keep ripping and running and doing this and staying busy and doing that. The cares of the world, that's fine. But I guarantee you, you will be out there in the ocean without a floaty. Mm -hmm. The devil don't care about you. All he want to do is take your soul to hell. Amen. Yes. He will put anything in your pathway to block you from God. Yes, that's right. Your children, your loved ones, your spouse, anybody amen he don't yeah. care you use anything and anybody <laughs> you all have to understand he is dogmatic he does not care about you all he wants is your soul mm. and we better wake up as believers and understand that we're not doing god no favor we're doing ourselves a favor that's right by practicing these things, by listening to his word, by saying, Lord, you're good, by giving him honor, giving him glory. We doing that for ourselves. Yeah. Praise God. Because the Lord said he don't care. He will make the rocks cry out to him. Praise God. If the humans don't want to praise him, he'll make the rocks cry out to him, cry out, but ain't no rock gonna cry out for me. Hosanna. Amen. Bless God. Amen. Hey. So no, ain't no rock crying out for me. I'm gonna hey. give God what belongs to him all the days of my life because, hey. you know, I have come to the conclusion. Let me tell you something. For God I live, for God I die. Hey. Hey. Point blank. Ain't going to be no flip-flopping over here. Amen. So, you know, but it's a process you have to go through where you get on that other side where you realize, you know what? Ain't no more flip-flopping for me. It's out the question. I'm going to do what God tell me to do to my best ability. If I fall, I'm going to get back up. But my mind is made up. I'm going all the way with Jesus. Hello, Amen. somebody. Amen. Hey, it's just you gotta make up in your mind that no matter what, you don't you don't press, you don't put your salvation on what's going on in your life. You put That's your right. salvation on for God I live, for God I die. He is my creator. No matter what I go through in this life, it has no bearing on who God still is. If I'm rich, poor, black or white, it still don't have no bearing. God is God almighty. 
by himself. He created everything in this world. It does not matter what man's opinion will say. God is the creator of everything. And we don't go off of what people's opinions are about our God. Yes, that's right. You got to know him for yourself. That's why you have to shut things down every now and again and get in the Lord's presence. Mm -hmm. So you may learn the God that you serve. Amen. Amen. So I want to go to this one last scripture in the book of Timothy. Verse Timothy, verse uh, chapter three, verse five. And this is really for uh, uh, Shakia because she was talking about that past on week last Sunday. So let's go to the book, First Timothy chapter three, verse five. And read, somebody read that. Uh, read from uh, five to seven. All right, so Timothy, who is in the first sent Timothy, chapter three, verse five through seven. Hold on, I'm on Will's day. I'm at first. You said first Timothy? Yeah, first Timothy five. chapter three. Start at verse five and read through seven. Okay, three. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how should he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Amen. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Okay, stop right there. All right, so we see, I told you, uh, Shakia, in the book of Timothy, you all see what he's saying. Um, this is Paul writing to Timothy, letting him know about the denomination, the titles of the people in the church. He's telling them a church leader must not be a new believer because he might become proud and the devil will cause him to fall. Also, people outside the church must speak well of him so that he will not be disgraced and fall into the devil's trap. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Again, their life must be blameless. You can't just go around and you know you got, you know, you sleeping around and you doing this, you doing that. People could just point thing at you, accuse you, accuse you, accuse you. And the stuff they're accusing you of is true. It ain't like they lying on you. Hello. Amen. So it this is what uh, Shakia, this is a scripture you can use and you can read the rest of this book, uh, this chapter of Timothy. Um, you, you had the question about the pastor still smoking weed. So these are some scriptures that you can read. But again, how can, Bible said you must manage your own family well, okay? For if a man cannot manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? Hello, somebody. You got folk household running churches. Their household is out of control. Amen. The, the Bible clearly states that. If you can't run your own household, your kids are off the chart. I mean, just gone. And no, you can't be responsible when, when they grown, but we still got young kids that ain't even grown and they off the charts. You understand? 
And, and you got these people leading churches, y'all. Amen. They at home life is disgusting, dysfunctional, and they leading uh, congregations and buildings. Amen. See, that's the thing about a good leader. It takes God to bring the leader out from among the people, take them in hiding. That's why, y'all, Moses was gone for so long, 40 days. You know, when he was over there in um, Midian, y'all know it was it was 40 years between the time Moses left Egypt and the time he returned. Mm -hmm. It took 40 years for God to work all that mess out of him, all that Egyptian crap he was taught. Mm -hmm. And to get him to get rooted and grounded it takes God to Amen. get you rooted in the spirit of God and connect it to the point he can use you. Amen. But that takes diligence and that takes commitment from the child of God. So again, you know, you got all of these people. God takes you and he and he he grooms you and it takes years for that y'all mm -hmm. this stuff don't happen overnight mm -hmm. it takes years why so you can stand the test of time so you will be able to rightly divide so you will know the word for yourself you already got a personal relationship with Christ Jesus mm hmm you know his voice. You done heard his voice. You know, all of these little, you know, uh, sugar coat, bubble gum preachers, you know, opening up churches and then, you know, gay, they only been saved for two years and now they just, you know, opening up churches. Mm -hmm. You know, again, a lot of people are not called from God. That's what y'all have to understand. In the Christian world, there's a lot of leaders and they wasn't called by God. They were called by their own ambitions. Okay? So you just have to know if a person, you just have to ask the spirit of God, discern for me, Holy Ghost, whether this person is of God or not. Amen. So Amen. when you come to situations in life like that, like she did with that pastor smoking weed, that's what you got to do. But it tells you right here in the word of God, that you're not supposed to live like that. He just said, how can you, your household all jacked up, but you talking about you leading the children of God. He picks people that is going to obey and know, and know their life is not perfect, but he can use them because they're humble. You know, it takes a lot for people to become humble. Yes, because the amen. average person <laughs> walks around with pride in their yep. hearts. Amen. It takes a humble person, you know, to really do the works of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You got to humble yourself. That's a fact. Yes. Yep. And so many people in the world, you know, they're full of pride of life. And oh, then yeah. sometimes when you give your life to Christ and you come to the kingdom of light, you still got that mentality. You still mm -hmm. functioning with pride in your heart because mm -hmm. nobody's telling you that's not the way to go. You need deliverance. You need to fast. You need to pray. Yeah. You need to ask God to clean that out of you because yep. God hates pride. Oh, yeah. Bible says that he hates it. Mm -hmm. So, you mm -hmm. know, these are things that, um, you know, Holy Ghost gave me today for y'all. And I hope everybody, you know, I see that y'all were engaging. Let's give God a hand praise on today. We did a little different today because that's how the spirit was rolling. I roll with the spirit. Whatever he go, however he want to roll, that's how we roll. Amen. So Amen. to God be the glory. We thank God for the word on today. And we just thank him for all of the testimonies. And I, if anybody have a comment, go ahead. The, floor is all the only comment I have is I'm going to meditate on the scriptures that we did today. And the one that I'm basically going to focus on is like 
the one that we talked about with no arguing and no complaining. Because I find, you know, a lot of people that I come in contact with and I speak to, you know, they complain all the time. And I, I'm not saying that yeah. I don't complain, but I humbled myself after right. everything that goes on in everybody's life, not just my life, everybody's life. Right. I'm telling you, when when things hit you hard, it, it's gonna hum if it don't humble you, then you you need to um seek God. You, and not just because you looking for a, a miracle to happen, you just gotta seek God. Period. Amen. No matter what you do in your life, and so I know for a fact that God has humbled me in my life because I don't have some crazy times. I don't have some good times and I still have good times. I laugh every single day. They tell me all the time, you laugh all the time. I'm, yep, I laugh everything because I just keep it in my heart and I keep God first in my life and it's changing Amen. my life. And I'll be just looking at people like, okay, you know, normally I would get right back with it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm not getting back with it. I'm going right. to go ahead on. No and need, right. myself. That's, right. that's what I've been doing. And yeah. I know that's God. Because if Hallelujah. it wasn't for God, I'm telling you, I wouldn't be the way how I am right now. We know, we know. To God be the glory. To God, <laughs> to be, God the glory. be the glory. Glory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Amen, amen. All right, anybody else? Praise the Lord. That was, I like the way you did it today. That was real. I like, it was, it was kind of like Bible study. But, I, you know, I got some, a lot out of it because... Just even knowing that, first of all, whatever you go through, prayer got to be number one. You got to Amen. pray about things, good things, bad things, things that you don't know about, things that you do know about. You got Amen. to pray about everything. Amen. And so, you know, it just, it just was a reminder to me that, you know, make sure I continue to pray. And then I, I thought thinking about, um, you know, sometimes people are let people take them away from God. Yes. But pull them away yep. from God. Just, yes. And you're not even supposed to even be thinking like that. Like if a person wrong you or a person um a person um just you know just made you mad and then you pull away from God. That's not yeah. what you're supposed to be doing. No. It just made me it reminded me of that and I'm just like well Lord I know sometimes I'll be mad I'll be like you know what I need to get on church. Instead of me saying I don't want to get on church, I mean I need to get on church. Yes. Like, I was like this when I got up here at first. I was Amen. my voice then. I'm like, my voice keep going in and out. And now I'm all the way back. Like that was See? <laughs> look at God. Look at God. Look at God. The devil tried to make me think that it was on me. It I have been going in and out. Like I woke up this morning and could barely talk. And now I'm talking again. You sound but, just fine. Amen. Right, so I just thank and praise God. The God be the glory. Way back. But he, you know, he been so good to us. He been so good to us, and he put it. If he give you the stuff to tell us, and be reminded, us like you will yeah. be praying about something. I'll be praying about something, and then you will come right in and reiterate it or confirmation and stuff. So I, you, I thank and praise God just showing up for us and being who He is in our life. Amen. And, I'm and look, it, um, I don't know. Some people, I don't know what how they could run away. I I can't run away. I gotta run towards it. When Amen. Stuff, you know, I say when people get in trouble, they run away and all that. No, I don't no. want to run away when I'm in trouble. I'm going towards God. I'm in trouble. Girl, if you're going the wrong yeah. way. You run away. Yes. That's Amen. Way to go, no help come from the Lord. So how Amen. the world you run the wrong you run the wrong way if you going by yourself? I would not be fighting alone. <laughs> I, I would not going be by fighting yourself. alone. No, Amen. I know that when it, oh. when you when you going through stuff, you got to go to run to God. Yes. <laughs> what is, what is yeah. going on with people? You going the wrong way? Go to God. Amen. Amen. I just said that's the trick of the enemy, y'all. He does that to the average believer. It's a trick. Yeah, like no, you gonna run from God. You even if you even if when you first become a believer, you know you know that you see the changes and all that stuff. You see God gonna work. You see it. And he show you. Yeah. So when the hard time come, go the other way. When you came to God, you was in a hard time. Amen. You know, yep. uh, no. -uh. I don't, I don't get that part, but anyway, I just thank and praise God. He been doing good. He been, you know, treating us well. He Amen. Been, 
working in our life and blessing us. Amen. So y'all continue to pray my strength. Amen. Yeah, I, I want to reiterate that again. I said that earlier. It's That's number one-on-one -on -one trick of the enemy, um, especially with babes in Christ. He always try to get you alone, get you isolated, get you get an attitude with somebody in church or get an attitude with God or whatever. He will use any device he can to get you out of the presence of God. Amen. All right, mm -hmm. anybody else? I just want to say thank God for the reading of the word. And like um, TT said, um, I'm thankful for how you did it today. It made me really um, realize, okay, like these are some of the ways I have and these are some of the things that I do. These are some of the things I need to change. Amen. Um, so it was just really an eye opener on today. And Amen. really putting yourself in, um, in the shoes that you're supposed to. And I just want to say thank God again for the word. Amen. Bless God. Amen. Bless God. Anybody else? DP, you got a comment? <clears throat> you there, DP? I think he was driving. Mm. All right, anybody else have a comment? I got a comment. Um, I, I just want to thank and praise God for the, the word was so powerful on today. And yes. um, it all kind of comes back to obedience. Because... Yes. The Bible teaches us that obedience is better than sacrifice. So mm -hmm. everything that you hear when you came up here today, when, you know, God was pointing these things out to us, what to do in these situations and how we are to carry ourselves. No one knows if we're doing these things, but, but God and ourselves. Um, and I say that to say, um, um, like, we out here in this everyday life, right? And the Bible teaching us, you know, don't be just a, a hearer of the word, also be a doer of a word, right? So, mm -hmm. it, you know, you have to get to a point in your life, like Kim said, for God I live, for God I die. Nobody is watching your every single move. You Amen. have to have that personal commitment to that thing. Just like when you commit to your spouse, you know what I'm saying? To death do us part. You know, you, you committed to it regardless to what the other person do. You know, Amen. you're trying your best to stay committed to the vows that you made to God. So I like, I, I like Sister Kamiko said, how you be out here. And I used to, I used to curse a lot too. And, and mm -hmm. God delivered me from that. And just the other day, now I haven't been driving a whole lot because I, I work from home. But since right. I started the new job, my training is out in the field. So I have to go to the <laughs> office. And the man driving up behind me get all the way into the left lane just to come all the way back into the right lane and, and kind of cut me up and so I wanted to I wanted to give him the bird I wanted to give him the bird I did I did I did I did, I did. I did. but in that split second the Holy Ghost was like ah uh -uh. you know and I thank and praise God for that because it is those split seconds that will make the, the biggest result. Like you don't even know by not doing that, what that has blessed you with in your future. You Amen. know what I'm saying? For yep. you not slipping back that one time, because God is taking note of it. Nobody else, God is taking note of how Amen. you get in the, and when you get in the crunch, God looking to see what you're going to do, what you're going to do, you know? And I started to, because I wouldn't think nothing of it. Because it didn't right. make no sense how that man did. Mm. But the Holy Ghost. But for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you for the Holy Ghost. And I thank you, praise you, Sister Kimmy. Because ever since you taught me how to talk to my Holy Ghost, I speak to my Holy Ghost. Thank you, That's Jesus. That's right. And, and so it was the Holy Ghost was stopping me right in that split second. And I didn't even realize it. So after the man, after everything had just happened in that second, and then I was driving, and then I was, then I calm on down. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. Because I don't show up in the world like I used to. Amen. You know, I thank and praise God for that. Because that's why you have to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Um, yeah. The things that you are inclined to do, like you would normally do, you got to pray and ask God, you know, uh, um, hey, God, one five, let me consider my own ways. And God, Amen. the things that are not like you, Lord, please take them out, pluck them out. 
And you have yeah. to say this prayer daily. Yeah. Daily, mm -hmm. daily, daily, until you get to the point where you're not reacting in that way. So I Amen. thank you, praise God, for the word on today, all of the good teaching. It is for us. The instruction is for us, you yeah. know, to prove us, to correct us so that we can get it right. Amen. You know, when every day God wakes us up so that we can get it right, so that when he does crack the sky, you know, we want to be able to not just go to heaven with God, but we want to be able to demonstrate a godly life while we on this earth. So y'all continue to pray for me in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we want, and also, like she said, God is taking notes. I'm not there to see what y'all practicing and what y'all doing and what you ain't doing, but God sees it. So when I bring the word through the power of the Holy Ghost, that's God talking to y'all. I hope y'all know that. Whatever the word is, what we're reading, and whatever <laughs> I'm saying, it's through the spirit of God because he knows what everybody is doing, okay? All right, so BJ, let me read his. BJ said, thank God, even um, everyone being on today. Happy Father's Day. Who is a father? Who is a father on today? And thank you, and God is good for everyone. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen, BJ. Amen. Amen. Bless you, son. Amen. I want to say something. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at baby. Oh, wow. Look at baby. He's so cute. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise him, baby. Praise him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Anybody else have a comment? Uh, Shakia, uh, do you have a comment? She's not on the phone. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Anybody else have a comment? Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, uh, Deacon. You got a comment? Um, uh, I just think that um, I'm really happy for the word on today. That was really good. Um, I like it that uh, you know, I like the part that I read on uh, James. Um, what is it? One. It said, uh, "Be doers, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only." And then, Amen. So that's why we got to stay on, stand on that. And also, I like the part that um, how we rebuke anytime that some thoughts come into your mind that don't line up with the word of God. We just got to rebuke that right Amen. away in the name of Christ Jesus. Because, you know, the, the, the uh, demons in hell and, 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 and for, they tremble at the name of Jesus. Amen. Something is trying to set up in your head, you know, the 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 they get you going and doing that thing. As soon as you speak the name of Jesus, that thing gotta go. Amen. You know, so it, it starts in the mind and it works its way into the physical world. So, you know, that's one of the things we talked about on today, you know. And it goes right along with you know, be the doers of the word, not just Amen. It. and um you know, in prayer, you know, of course, we always pray. And um, that's one thing about, um, you know, that God put us in the village because, you know, that, um, you know, that we're supposed to be the head and not the tail. Amen. And I mean, we're going to, we're going to, some things going to happen, but we you know that we're going to, uh, with the word, we just got to speak the word of God on, on it. And, uh, you know, the word will not come back void. So, I, you know, I think about that today. All the word we spoke on today, we read today. And, you know, the Holy Ghost um, was the head over all of everything that went on today. So, you know, yeah. it's just good to keep, it's, he's just preparing us and training us. And, and you know, and, and that's how we should carry ourselves this week coming up. Speaking the word, Amen. you know, commanding our day. Um, Amen. And, and somebody, you know, be ready to um, 
tell the word to somebody whether they want to hear it or not, whether you're a mm-hmm. Christian or not. You know, just guide them to the word and repentance and, you know, repent and ye, be ye baptized for the remission of the sins so you can receive the Holy Ghost. So you, can, you know, because that's the way we need to be. The Holy Ghost is the one in charge of all of this. So everything Amen. that we say, everything that happened, and everything we say was from the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why we need to stay under that, in that, and, and those our steps of guided because... If we want to make it to the rapture, that's where we got to be at. And, yeah. and there ain't no better place to be but in the will of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else, Monique? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise I'm telling you, I really enjoyed the word on today. I thank God for reiterating to us again, you know, don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. Yes. You know, um, because we are being taught. It made me think back to when we were, we thought we was being taught, but we wasn't. Right. And God saw fit for us to come over to the truth, to come mm-hmm. over to the truth. And I just thank God for that on today that, He's showing us how to make the rapture um, because the teachings that we was under, we would have been left behind. Um, It's amazing that he loves us just that much. Amen. I mean, even though, and that goes to show you that our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways because, you know, with that kind of thinking, it it just, it it, um, takes the scales off your eyes. Yeah. So I just thank God for that one today. And I thank God that, you know, the babes, you know, everybody is is learning this stuff because, I mean, it's important for your journey to learn this early on. Yes. Amen. That you won't turn back. So you won't get off your journey. So, you know, you won't say, well, they lied to me. You know, I thought it was going to be peaches and cream. It's amazing (laughs) because you actually think that. Yep. Yeah, you do. You you be thinking, oh, all I gotta do is give my life to Christ and everything's gonna be all right. No, you no. <laughs> that you know, I remember because I was like, yo, wait a minute, what does she mean? There's demons. What I was going ham about <laughs> that. Look, I was ready. Look, I'm so glad that I ain't pop off on that lady. You know, know, but I would look when I got home. I was like, Sister Kimmy, you know, she had the nerve to say. But, you know, I thank God for the teaching to put everything in, in the right perspective for yes. um, you know, you, you to be able to live holy and for you to be able to make the rapture. Yes. And, um, you know, like Sister Kamiko and Sister Crystal were saying, you know, man, I don't think nobody's mouth was worse as mine. I'm trying to tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. I, I be, you know, I be looking back sometimes, and I, I'll be to say something, and you will be looking at me like, "What?" Hey. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, and I'm trying to tell you, and it will come so quick and so natural. But mm-hmm. I just thank God for showing me that that wasn't natural. That right. that wasn't the quick way to be. You know, you got to be right. slow. You got to stop and wait sometimes, you know, yeah. um, you know, you got to be slow to speak, you know, and yeah, quick yeah. To listen. you got to turn that thing around. Mm-hmm. And another point that I wanted to reiterate too is, you know, the Bible do let us know that everything that is wrong is going to be made right in the last and evil days. Yeah. So, you know, so society makes it, like is everything is okay with popping off and acting this a certain way and yeah. you know and they nickname it for you you know they call it something else you know like right. I remember we were saying words and we didn't even know what they mean like on fleet you understand yeah. me I mean yeah. things that you they cover it up when you really yeah. really is giving um um you know the the enemy. The, the, the blessing to come into your life with these things, yeah. with the popular shows, the popular um, phrases, the popular mm-hmm. clothes, the popular yeah. spots to go, you know, yeah. I mean, it, but it's too snack 
your salvation away from you. So yeah. I just thank God for being over here in the truth and to be learning that these uh, the, the ways of the world is not the way to go. So Amen. y'all just stay on your journey and keep holding on to God's unchanging hands. Hand. I know that's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I want to say too, you know, what's oh, what really shocked me when I gave my life back to Christ, when I started realizing and the Holy Ghost started showing me things, I started saying, well, you know what? That means like, if you look at the big picture, the whole world just about is built for the enemy. Every mm-hmm. Because the Bible says he's the prince. He rules <laughs> the earth. He rules the earth, y'all. So the thing is, when you look at that scripture and you take it literally, then you start seeing the picture. You know what? That's why everything is so negative. You know mm-hmm. what? That's why everything is set up the way it is. Because Amen. it's all for his children. Amen. It's all set up for the children of darkness. It's not set up for us. That's why Paul said, come out. Trying to tell us, we this ain't your world. This ain't, when you give your life to Christ, the Lord set it up where when you come to the kingdom of light, you know, that's when you realize the world really wasn't my home, okay? The world really wasn't where I was supposed to be. That's where I started off, but that's not the ending of my story. You know, um, the world is set up for unbelievers. It's not set up for believers. If you look at everything and all the structure in the world, from economically, from the school system, if you look at the way everything is ran in the government, It is not ran for the believer benefit. It's ran for the unbelievers benefit. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's really really set up against the believer. Amen. That's why I said it's so important that, you know, believers get their own communities and have their own schooling. Why? Because in regular school, because that is set up in the world. That is the devil's system. So therefore, uh, now we're coming to the age where now they're fighting against teaching the kids about prayer, taking it out to school. So we got to remember, though, y'all, it was always his system. The only difference is now everything is coming to the light. It was always set up like that. But because we were in the dark at the time, we didn't see it like that. Amen. It was always set up like that to eventually, as time went on, to take out everything good, to take out everything positive. So now we, because of the child of God, the church world has been in a coma for decades, and now they're starting to wake up and realize now, why? Because now they're coming to your kids' school and making them... uh, uh, start trying to make them think they're not who they are sexually. Mm. They're actually putting that in their brains that you cannot, you might not be a male. You might be a female. It's whatever you want to be. Mm. So now the Christian people are waking up a little bit because of them doing things to this nature. Now they're starting to realize instead of us fighting the government, the system, the world system to force them, not to force that on our children. We should have had our own schools a long time ago. We wouldn't have never even had to worry about this foolishness. If all these mega million preachers and and churches was providing, you know, schooling for the Christian children, we would not have to worry about this stuff. Because our children would be in a Christian-based school where they are learning about Christ Jesus, where they not learning about that uh, demonic stuff. But because, again, like the children of Israel, because of disobedience, this is why we are suffering in a lot of different areas in Christianity. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Yeah, so, you know, it's sad. 
So now we we have to now we we got to fight back. You know, we got to fight this and fight that and fight. But, you know, it would not never been like that if these people was not so corrupt, these leaders in these churches. Amen. So, again, you know, it, it bothers me because we wouldn't even have to be worrying about our children like that. They would be safe and sound in the right school, learning the right stuff. But no, we got to go to the public school. Now they got to go to the public school. Now they bringing all this stuff in the public school. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the LAW soon. They only introducing it to the public right now. But eventually, y'all, down the road, they're going to make it lawful. Hmm. For, for your child not to put the gender. Your child is talking about they don't have a gender. I'm telling y'all, it's getting really, really ugly and sick out here in this world. So stay on your children, stay involved in their lives, stay involved in what they're watching and what they're taking in. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen. villages, everybody go ahead and give your scripture reading for the week. Well, I'm going to go first because I got to go. I got to go see Uncle okay. Charles at his place. I'm going okay. to focus on the, I'm gonna focus on that scripture that we read today. Uh, do everything without... Uh, Mama ready to play. Philippians. Yeah. What is it? Philippians. 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 Two. Yeah. Uh, do everything without grumbling and arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Because I ain't trying to be on that crooked path. I'm not Amen. saying I don't be on a crooked path, but Amen. I'm telling you, I'm trying to get off. Stay off that path. Stay that's off of it. Right. Amen. So that's my scripture for the week. And all of y'all have a good holler. Happy Father's Day. Love your father. Love your brother. Love your uncle. Everybody. Even the ones that's not here. Love them all, y'all. I'm telling yeah. you. Because yeah. I feel so much better today. Thank you for lifting that, that heaviness off my heart, y'all. Yeah. Thank you. The blood of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay. I, I got Isaiah 54, um, okay. 17. But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me, and I, the Lord, have spoken. And that's Amen. The, the NIT version. Amen. Bless God. That's the no weapon formed against me. Yes, no weapon, no weapon form. Yes, amen. Okay, I got um Psalms 46 and 5. It says, God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at her at break of day. Amen. God will help her help her at break of day. Amen. Bless God. He is definitely our helper. Anybody else? Praise God. I got Psalms 128, um, verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways. Amen. 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 Walk in his way. BJ said, thank you for Miss Kim for everything, and thank you. You are the best. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, BJ. Love you, son. All right, anybody else? Mine is coming from uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. And this is in the NIV version. It says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Amen. Where that scripture came from? Hebrews 4 uh, and 12. You know what? I had that down. I was going to teach on that. I had that scripture for one of the lessons. Amen. Coming up. Amen. Thank the you, two Jesus. legs of the Lord, the word of God. Amen. Amen. All right. Next. Anybody else have their scripture for the week? All right, uh, Deacon, did you want to give your scripture for the week? Do 
DP, are you there? Are you still with us? I don't know what happened with him. All right, I guess not then. All right, then we praise God for all of the testimonies, all of the interpretations. We, pra we praise God for the uh, early morning worship, which was really good this morning. I mean, the Holy Spirit really showed up in the mer uh, morning worship. And- um, Oh, I got my- Oh, okay, go ahead. Man. It's Isaiah 54. I always say, I like this one a lot. No weapon that is formed against me. Against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me, say the Lord. Amen. Amen. Very strong um, scripture. We all love that scripture, and it's true. And again, that's the Lord talking. So, you know, just recite that scripture. If that's your weekly one, recite it every day. Amen. No weapon form against me shall prosper. Amen. Amen. And, um, yes, and we thank God for all of the uh, testimonies, the music ministry, uh, Monique. We thank you for that song. Um, and again, remember, everybody, spoken word is still available. If anybody wants to do a spoken word, just let me know, and I'll put you in the program. Amen. Amen. All right, without further ado, somebody go ahead and do the benediction. Amen. Hey, you want to do the